Hello and welcome back. Today I want to do part of my November wrap-up. Now starting with a psychological thriller, I read The Doll House by Phoebe Morgan, which I requested via NetGalley for review. I buddy read this with Lisa from Books and Smiles. This is about a woman who is going through infertility treatment. She's been trying for years with her husband to have a baby and the book starts with her failing yet another IVF treatment. And at the beginning of the story, she comes across a piece of a dollhouse, which appears to be the same dollhouse that she had as a child. She initially takes this as a very good sign. However, as things go along, she starts to see a more sinister side to the fact that she is finding pieces of her childhood dollhouse all around her home and the story takes off from there. I personally didn't see the ending coming. I didn't guess the twist, but at the same time, this was just an average psychological thriller. I read so many and it takes a lot for one to really blow me away. However, I do think it's enjoyable. If you're thinking about picking it up, I wouldn't stop you, but it's not the best one of the year in my opinion. However, what I really liked about it was those aspects of infertility. I don't know if the author herself has dealt with it, but I felt like she gave a very honest perspective. She talked about the main character's anxiety and struggles and just the difficulty of having to deal with all of the drugs, the testing, the doctor's appointments. And I just thought it was a very good representation of that, something you don't often see in books, particularly not in thrillers and mysteries. So I do recommend it for those reasons. Next, I read The Best Day Ever by Kara Rhoda, which is a bit of a suspense about a couple that leave their children with a babysitter and decide to go off and have a romantic getaway at their cabin. And the story is a suspense because you know something very dark and sinister is going on. There really isn't any secrets in the story, but I'm not going to give away too much of the plot. All the characters are very unlikable and purposely done that way. If you need likable characters, characters with redeeming qualities, you may not enjoy this one. If you enjoy characters that are just vile people, you may like this one quite a bit. I really enjoy reading from the perspective of a bad guy and this was one of them. I listened to this as an audio and that really enhanced the experience. The narrator just killed it. He was so inflective and just had such a performance that it just kicked the book up a notch. It was reminiscent in narration to something like You by Carolyn Kepnes in the fact that while this book was probably just average for me because I read it as an audio, I actually probably rated it higher because of that. So if you're going to pick it up, I definitely recommend picking up the audio version. However, I was disappointed by the ending. While again, it's not meant to be a twist or turn, you really know what's going on very early on. I felt that the author made the mistake of changing the tone later into the book and turning it from this entertaining ride to something very serious. And by doing so, it just changed the kind of book it was. It no longer read like a thriller, but instead read like a very sad contemporary. And that is just not the kind of book I thought this was. So I enjoyed parts of it. If you're gonna pick it up, try to get the audio. And it was fun in places, but not quite perfect for me. I wouldn't give it five stars, but I know other people did. So if you're interested in checking it out, definitely do. Now switching gears to science fiction, I read Artemis by Andy Weir, which I received via NetGalley. I did a separate review on this like so many other people, but if you didn't hear it, this is about a young woman named Jazz who lives on the moon. She is a smuggler and gets an opportunity to do somewhat of a heist, which is supposedly going to make her super rich. Of course, things are never as simple as they seem and the story takes off from there. I did again a longer review, but basically I did not connect very well with the main character. I felt like this book read like a YA book, which for some people isn't a bad thing, but I don't read and enjoy a lot of YA anymore. So it really did detract from my enjoyment of it. And that's something I've noticed in the reviews that have come out that people who read more YA seem to be rating this book higher than people like myself who don't. So I would kind of use that as a marker of whether or not you should pick this book up yourself. There were things I enjoyed about it. It does have some of Andy Weir's humor, but to me, the main character felt a lot more flat. I loved Mark Watney in The Martian and Jazz was pretty annoying in my opinion. So I somewhat recommend it. I know other people will enjoy it. I didn't hate it. I gave it 3.5 stars, but it was just average. 
Along a similar note, I read another science fiction thriller crossover, and that was Places in the Darkness by Chris Brookmeyer, and I also did a review of this one. This is set in the future where humans have built a space station with the plan of building a generational ship that will eventually move humans to other planets. And on the space station, a murder has just occurred and there are people, two women, that are tasked with tracking down the murderer and investigating what happened. This book was very entertaining, fast paced, and actually had a lot of good hard science fiction in it, which was one of my favorite aspects. I really liked hearing about the technology, understanding how the space station itself worked, understanding what was going on in this future but I didn't connect with the characters very well. I was happy to see two female leads in science fiction, but they were very unlikable, which I don't have a problem with, but they were unlikable in a way that was just not very interesting. And at the same time, there were some moments where the story got really over the top and kind of broke my suspension disbelief. I did still enjoy this one. I actually give it 3.5 stars. So if you're thinking about picking it up, I do recommend it if that sounds like your kind of story. So I also read Persepolis Rising by James S.A. Corey, which I requested from Orbit Books. As you know, this is the seventh book in the Expanse series, a space opera that I have been loving since I started reading it last year. Books one through six made my best books of the year list, and I just continue to love this series. I won't get into any spoilers because this is the seventh book, but I have done a separate review, which is entirely spoiler free. So even if you are not caught up in the series, you can watch that without getting spoiled but I will tell you that the characters in this series are fantastic. There's some great diversity. The story is just epic in scale, which is why it's really hard to summarize it without giving too much away because where the book starts in book one is so far from where we are now. And I just continually love the story. There are two more books that are gonna be coming out and I cannot wait. I just love them and would definitely recommend that series. Now to talk fantasy, I also read The Wizard Killer by Adam Dries. I've actually read this book uh, two times. This is my third time reading through. The reason I picked this up again was because the author so kindly offered to send me an audible credit so that I could check out the brand new audiobook for it. The narration in that is killer. The narrator just has a fantastic performance. If you're not familiar with this, I've actually done a separate review of this, but this is a serialized fantasy story that's set in a post-apocalyptic world. And going into it, you have to understand that a serial is quite different than a traditional novel. This is all about really short, snappy episodes that are gonna leave you on a cliffhanger. Think about binge watching a Netflix TV show. And that is what this book is in a serialized form. It is just so much fun, it's so fast paced. Now that I've read it several times, I've picked up new details. There's a lot of good world building in it, but as someone who doesn't normally read and enjoy fantasy, this one works for me because you can just go along for the ride. You're not gonna get stuck or confused if you're not understanding every little detail of the world. It's just a good story. It's very conversational. It's not very hefty in terms of literary writing. Instead, it's just really just this fun story that is super easy to read. It could definitely be read by a young adult just because there's no swearing in it. Instead of swearing, they say yig every time, which is kind of cute when you're hearing it on the audio version. But I just thought the audio was great. Whether you're gonna pick this up as a physical copy or as an audiobook, it is just a really fun book. And I just can't wait for season three, which is supposed to be coming out soon. So I'm looking forward to that. Finally, I read two graphic novels, one being Space Battle Lunchtime by Natalie Reese, which is a young adult story about a earthen baker who is recruited to go and participate in a reality baking TV show set on an alien planet. And it's ridiculous and super cute. It's done in an artwork that is just adorable with all color illustrations. It's much cuter than the stories I normally read, but honestly, it was a lot of fun and I did really enjoy it, even though it's super short and definitely meant for a younger audience. And so that was a lot of fun. If you're interested in picking it up, I actually encourage you to do so. Finally, I read What Did You Eat Yesterday, which is the first volume of a manga that is a slice of life about an older gay couple. 
One is a big foodie and just loves cooking. He's also incredibly frugal and is always looking for a good deal at the grocery store. This story is just super cute, very funny. I don't often like these cute slice of life manga, but for whatever reason, this one just worked so well for me. You know that I love Japanese culture, and while I didn't completely understand all of the food they were talking about, it still sounded delicious, and I just need to continue on with this series. I really enjoyed it, so I'm sure you're gonna see more volumes of it in upcoming wrap-ups. So that's it for this video. As always, leave comments down below as well. Like, comment, subscribe, and please do follow me on Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. I'd love to hear more about the books that you read in the month of November, and I will talk to you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye.